So this burr is a millimeter and a half thick. Use that to your advantage. So what you want to do is just make a little notch the incisal edge and the top of that burr should line up with the incisal edge of that tooth. So you can see that right there. It's just the depth of that burr right there. And then you're just going to mow off the rest. Go ahead. And that's your incisal reduction. So you can see the incisal reduction there is about a millimeter and a half right there. So we're gonna use our number two burr here, which is 0.8 millimeters at the tip. And we are going to basically make a little line right at the tissue level. And I like to do big sweeping movements and do the whole buckle surface. And just stay in that little line all along, all along the gum line there. We're not going below the tissue yet, we're just going to the tissue, the depth of that burr, and we're maintaining the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth. As we're going interproximally, I always like to look at the side of the burr, just barely miss the tooth that we're actually not prepping. And then we'll do this side here. Make sure I miss the tooth that we're not prepping. And then boom. And we're just going to finish defining our racetrack here, the thickness of that burr. Now we're going to do our second plane of reduction, and this brings me to a key point. When you're doing anterior crown preparation, you want a thin incisal edge that follows the arch form. The thin incisal ledge that follows the arch form is created by two things. Thing number one is your second plane of reduction on the buckle from about midway on the tooth down into the incisal ledge. And then thing number two is actually when you do your lingual reduction and carrying that up to including the incisal edge. So you want a thin incisal ledge that follows the arch form created by your second plane of reduction on the buckle and carrying the lingual reduction up to including the incisal edge. So let's go ahead and do our second plane of reduction right now. And we're basically gonna start about halfway down the tooth and then just roll in or roll back that inside the ledge. In adult fixed pros and for anterior teeth, you learn middle third, gingival third, middle third, incisal third. Well, pedo teeth are teeny tiny. You don't need to split it up into thirds, but basically you just wanna do half the tooth and roll it in. I like to actually use the unprepped tooth as a guide. So if you take a straight edge and you hold it against the unprepped tooth, your prep should be back in behind that point about a half a millimeter. And you can see that your prep is. It's back behind that line about a half a millimeter or more. And that's a good way to check your second plane of reduction. When you're working on a patient, you can just take your uh, explorer or a probe or any instrument and basically just hold it there um, basically when you're on a patient, you've got to go this direction. You can put the mirror here and then hold the straight edge here. You want to actually not only prep in the middle of the tooth to make it concave, but you want to carry that incisal or that lingual reduction up to include the incisal edge. Now we're going to do our subgingival reduction. For subgingival reduction, remember you're creating a cylinder. So you really want to keep your handpiece parallel to the long axis of the tooth or straight up and down. 
you don't really want to be tapering it, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. But basically, I'll come in, make a small little hole, either at the distal buckle or mesial buckle line angle, right next to the papilla, because that's where the tissue is the firmest. If you try to enter right on the straight buckle, especially on patients like that are mouth breathers, for example, that's like the worst example or the best example. That tissue is so thin, if you try to go in subgingival there, it'll tear and bleed. So what we're trying to do, the best way to not create bleeding or to achieve hemostasis is not to create it in the first place. And the best way to do that is with our preparation and being careful. But all I'm doing is making a little hole subgingively. And once that hole starts to get bigger, then I start fanning out from that point. And as I start to fan out from that point, that lead starts to disappear. Then I upright my burr straight up and down. In fact, when you watch me prep, I'm almost prepping an undercut. And that's actually a really good exercise to do is that anytime you're below the tissue, I actually slightly tip the angle of that burr in a little bit. And that'll help you create a nice cylindrical non-tapering preparation. So that's the buckle. So that's done. Now I'm going to do the lingual. And the lingual is basically the same thing. We're going to come in just a little bit to start to peel away that ledge. And then once that ledge starts to disappear, then you can upright your burr more and then go in the required millimeter and a half to two millimeters. And then when everything else is done, when you're all done there, then you're going to do the ring around the rosy five times. Once again, you're going to angle that burr in just a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. On the lingual, a, bit, a question that people always ask is how much lingual reduction do you need? And really there's not an exact amount. It's not like 0.5 or 0.7 millimeters. But basically what I do is I will just make the lingual surface concave and kind of scoop it out. But the important thing to remember is we want um, to include or include the inside of the ledge. So really you want to make the lingual surface concave and then just extend that or pull that burr up to include the inside of the ledge so that you get that thin inside of the ledge that follows the arch form. Because that's a key point for anterior tooth preparation. You want a thin incised ledge that follows the, follows the arch form. It's created by two things. Number one, your second plane of reduction on the buckle. And then number two, carrying the lingual reduction up to including the incised ledge. Completed preparation. Do you need to round the edges? It's optional. So now we can try our tooth on. And with practice, your tooth should fit on the first attempt every time and it does so there it is there's our finished there's our finished restoration